This show is clean, mm. pretty much. Okay, okay. I, 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 Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 746. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer, plus the return of the feature we haven't had for a long time called Mike on Mobile, where I'll be talking to an interesting guest in an interesting location. And the one thing about the drought... Mike's Daily Podcast. ...is that we get more ground. That news story we'll find out about... Mike's Daily Podcast. And on yesterday's show, Madam Ruta Vega dumped old milk on my head. She didn't realize that it should have been ice water instead. But she didn't get the memo, I guess. And she'll be in today's cartoon. And she's featured with Butterhead People. And I'm a loon for coming up with that concept. Writing the dialogue for that was... Mike's Daily Podcast. Painful. Reading it will be painful. But that's how this podcast rolls. Mike's. And speaking of rolls... Daily. Butter goes great with them. Podcast. That's strange how that all came back around. Yeah. It snapped around. You know what also snapped was the the earth. It shook, and Napa got hit particularly badly. And our thoughts and minds and hearts and spleens go out to them up there. Well, maybe not spleens, but there were a lot of injuries, and, well, we wish the best for them. I will be donating blood. Well, I would donate blood, but I gave a bunch on Tuesday for my doctor because she wanted to do tests on me, and that's what made me kind of almost faint. But I didn't faint. I didn't pass out. Just hadn't had anything to eat. Giving blood when you haven't eaten is a dangerous thing. But the earthquake shook Podcastro Valley, California a little. I didn't feel it too much. The houses up and down the street here seem to be fine. That's Northern California. All these faults. And that's why I pay a bunch of money for earthquake insurance every year. Look who just walked in. Oh my god, Matthew. Is it jelly? It's too hard to get down to your eyes. Oh my gosh, Mike Matthew. What jelly? The ground shook last night. It did. It's like so scary. It's strange. You know, people that live here in California, we get used to the earth shaking. But when you are from another part of the country and you move here, that just, you're, you're not going to go for that. You don't like earth moving, shaking, or it, the earth needs to be solid and not move at all. Yet, when I lived in the south and I was living there, there was another Californian guy that would call me up whenever there was a ton- tornado warning and go, oh my gosh, did you hear there's a tornado warning? Ah! And he would freak out. But the people in the South go, oh, tornadoes, they're horrible, but at least you know when they're coming. Earthquakes, you don't. I hate them both. Me too. The ghost just walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, did you watch the new Doctor Who last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. It was bad. Oh. All right. So I watched a lot of the old Doctor Who's. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Watch Tom Baker. I posted something on my Facebook yesterday. Tom Baker was in a computer ad with Romana. And a really funny, cute, old computer ad back when computers were very huge and did not do as much as they did they just do the common ones on your phone do today but my gosh this episode last night it was like really slow the new doctor has a scottish accent i know peter capaldi is scottish so he's just sticking with his normal accent whatever poor david tennant who's scottish had to change his accent had to work all those years faking a british accent and acting what Peter Capaldi doesn't want to do any acting. And then there was this thing where at the very end of the show, Matthew Smith makes an appearance as if to save that episode, he calls Clara. And it was just like, oh my gosh, they don't know what they're doing. I feel really bad. It was nice to see all the characters from the Potter, Monster whatever street the detective people that have recurred and actually mark gaddis wrote this 
And he wrote the other ones that featured the Potter Fleeter Mouse Street people. And he just did not do very well on this one. Crimson Horror was okay. The one with the other Clara when they were fighting the snow people and the great intelligence was okay. But this was... Everybody looked like they were in pain. All of the actors were like, what the f*** are we doing? What is going on? Stephen Moffat, help! Oh, wait. Stephen Moffat was probably out writing a Sherlock movie or something. A Sherlock episode, which is like a movie. And then BBC America did something really weird. Online, it had said that they were going to show the new episode at 8 o'clock. Although for the first 15 minutes, they were going to have Chris Hardwick, who seems to be the only person in America that likes Doctor Who, that looks like he's from a soap opera, and so he has some television presence. For all of us that know him and love him from At Midnight, we are watching him basically also writhing in pain. Will Wheaton from Star Trek The Next Generation and uh, Big Bang Theory, he didn't seem to help. I, I wanted to watch the after show, though, because Alton Brown was going to be on. I'm, one, I'm wondering what the heck would he have to say about Doctor Who? Perhaps he had a Doctor Who recipe. I don't know. Mike, so you really enjoyed the episode? Yeah, it was wonderful. Look who else just walked. Oh, nobody else is walking in. I do think it was interesting that at the very... Ep- so all the interesting stuff happened at the very end of the episode. And Stephen Moffat has made mention that these episodes of Doctor Who are standalone with maybe a little bit of an arc going on, a tiny little bit. But what he likes to do then is push that towards the end of the show. And so that's what all the good stuff was at the very, the last five minutes of the show. And we find out a little bit about the shop girl that gave Clara the phone number that got her in touch with the doctor to begin with. Wow, Mike, that's incredible. I know, but this is really incredible, and that is that the drought is so bad, it's causing the earth, the ground, to rise up half an inch in some parts of California due to the lack of water. Scientists at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego found the lack of water weighing down on the earth's surface is actually allowing for the ground to rise up an average of four millimeters with the most extreme case in the mountains of California where they have actually risen up to half an inch. It may seem like an incredible thing to conceptualize. One of the scientists involved in the research explained that it was like using an age-old rubber ball. Think of the earth as a big rubber ball. It's made of material that's elastic, and if you push on it, it goes in a little bit. If that push is taken away by water evaporating, there's less weight on that part of the earth and it goes up. As to if that caused the earthquake that happened this morning, doesn't say here in this article here at laist.com. So how much water has actually evaporated? About 240 gigatons or 62 trillion gallons of water. If you had a volume of water the size of the western U.S. that was 10 centimeters thick, that's how much water has been removed. The data has been collected from GPS sites set up eight years ago throughout the West meant to monitor plate tectonic movements. They noticed a sudden vertical shift in the GPS sensors within the last 18 months. Oh, they did add a sentence here at the very end saying that these changes won't affect the seismic activity and so it probably didn't affect the earthquake that happened today well what do you think about all this and the new doctor who and peter capaldi being the new doctor oh i I hope i hope the next episodes get better mark gaddis needs to stop writing for a while i think email me mike's deli podcast at gmail.com we read your comments on the section emails from email also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show mike's daily podcast at gmail.com we also have the website mike's daily podcast.com go there to find links to where to listen to the show in itunes and you can rate and comment on the show there that helps our ranking if you do that You can also find us on Facebook, like the Facebook page. And when I post a new show, share that with your friends and more people will find out about us that way. It's a great way to support the show. Another great way to support the show is through the Amazon deal today. Click on that and buy something at a great discount. And that helps us out too. That 
little window is there on the left-hand side of mikesdailypodcast.com. You can also find links to where to find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spreaker, Mixcloud, Podomatic, Yelp, Tumblr, Twitter. There's the blog and the daily podcast picture. And all my past interviews, too, are right there at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mike on the Wild. I'm talking to Rachel Stout. Hello, Rachel Stout. Hello, Mike. We're in an interesting location having this interview today. We're at a place called something, something Gulch. Marshall Gulch. Marshall Gulch in Bodega Bay. And it's beautiful. We got the ocean crashing. So this this segment I call Mike on Mobile because we're on mobile. And Basil's whining because Robert Owen Welsh from Welsh on the World is walking off with his dog. And Basil the Boxer wants to be close by with them. Uh, so, what do you do? What's one of your interesting lines of work that you do? I work as a professional art model in the Bay Area. Oh, okay. What does that mean? It means I take my clothing off for people in a respectable way. Oh, okay. Like, does that mean you start with your socks? What's the respectable way? You take off your... <laughs> what comes off first to be respectable? It's not quite like the order of operations in the way you take your clothing off. <laughs> but I do um, take my clothing off and people draw me. Oh, cool. Me. Oh, cool. Oh, I almost got hit by a wave. Uh, and they pay you. That's good. They do pay me, yes. It's a really cool form of work. And I get to sit there and meditate and think about things and stare at the wall in an inspiring way while people draw me. Yeah, what do you do all that time while you're sitting there and they're drawing you? You're thinking, what are you thinking? Honestly, there are moments where I just let my mind wander or I'm not really thinking about anything at all. But there are times when I'm thinking about math equations because I just got a degree in math. And sometimes I would... Think of a really difficult problem that I was trying to solve right before I went up on the stand, and I would spend the next three hours trying to work out an answer. Oh my gosh. So, like, if you're stuck waiting for a bus or waiting for a plane, that's a great way to while away the time. Yeah, it's really, it's really fun. I think that, you know, people always assume the hardest part of being an art model, especially a nude art model is that you're uncomfortable with everyone staring at you for hours on end and sort of looking at all of of your bits (laughs) and taking them apart and drawing them. But um, sometimes the the greatest challenge is being alone with your mind for three hours, especially if you're with a group that doesn't want to have music and they're very focused, which as a model you respect. But occasionally you feel like you're in a cemetery and it's sort of, you know, deathly quiet. And uh, your mind can be a really fun place to be, or it can be a challenging place to be. Wow. So you you have to... And people don't know that much these days about being quiet and being with themselves. They're so inundated with stimuli. Yes. And, And you are just saying... Oh, I have to. I have to hold. And some of those positions are difficult. Yes, absolutely. I have a very flexible body, but I'm also a curvier woman. So I look out because I kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, sometimes you have um, a body where it's very flexible, but there's not a lot there. And so I think my friends who are dancers and ballerinas and sort of acrobats, they have to work a little bit harder um, because there's there's really um, a need for the contortion when, when you have a lot of um, angles and sort of straight lines. Whereas with my body, I can just kind of strike a very beautiful, oh God, waves. Waves, water. <laughs> I can strike a very sort of classical pose from a Peter Paul Rubens painting or, you know, even, you know, Botticelli's Venus. And people are usually very inspired by these poses. Ah, wait, Botticelli's Venus. Is that what she's? she's... It's very appropriate for where we are on location. (laughs) That's why, because it has to do with the clamshell. The clamshell. She's coming out of the water. Right. Uma Thurman played her in The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. I never saw that. Yeah, it's the only good thing about the movie. I need to go see it for that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and so I think that, you know, going back to, to being still with your mind, I've studied Buddhism for over 10 years. 
And so I think without the ability to meditate and be quiet, I really would have gone crazy and stopped modeling years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, not all your jobs are fun. So some of my fun jobs, if you would like to hear. Sure. Should. Oh, I was going to let Basil off the leash. But they kind of have a have to have a dog on a leash law, and I got a ticket earlier this year. Let's not do that. Okay. Not again. Maybe let's kind of walk let's towards walk. Robert and yeah, Bailey. Yeah, he's looking extremely pensive over there. Yeah, we got to find out why he's so pensive. But yeah, so as we're walking on dead sea kelp, uh, what are some of the stranger things that you've done? So I think one of the stranger things that I've done is I was a model for a medical product that was going to be released and they needed a photographic model and they paid me a fair deal just to take photographs of my abdomen <laughs> and wow. for me to try this this sort of medical device that was in development and to talk to a bunch of engineers about it. <laughs> Wait, they took pictures of your abdomen. Yes, so they were they were in sort of innovating this interesting suture uh, device that would help with the stitches once a woman had come out of having a cesarean. Oh. And they just wanted so they just sort of put it on my abdomen with a bit of like light adhesive and they just wanted to know if it was comfortable. I see oh, water. Got to move away from the wave. So that was wow. a weird job. Let's see. So, uh, yeah, that was an interesting and weird job. That was very non-traditional. So but you didn't have to, like, stay still for a long period of time. No. I just hung out with a bunch of engineers and told them, you know, that their product was a good idea. Okay. I mean, they wanted my honest opinion, but they were doing a great job. It looked like it was going to be very successful. Oh, they just needed a real human being. Yes, exactly. Where are some of the other strange places that you've modeled? Strange places... I think not so much strange, but fun has been working at places like Pixar. Oh, doing what? Modeling. Oh, modeling. Yeah. So they have, I think as a company, they, they try to keep their artists happy. And so they have as an incentive um, program uh, a session once a week during lunch where the artists can go and draw a live model. Oh. And they like really fast poses, which is a lot of fun, I think, for me, because I get to be very creative. And I personally love that job because some of those artists are, you know, happy to share their work with you, let you take pictures. Sometimes they'll give you their work. Oh, wow. And I love seeing myself as a, a more animated character. It's a lot of fun. Anime. And, and what are fast poses? Fast poses. Anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. And you just strike whatever pose you, you feel? whatever pose. It's an interesting thing. Figure drawing is so specific because people think that you need to be doing um, all of the different yoga poses or that you need to be, you know, for my male model friends who do martial arts, they think that you need to be doing these crazy kung fu poses. But all an artist is looking for... Um, I'm going to steal a line from a friend of mine, is that you need to be inspired, and in being inspired, you're inspiring to the artist. So your the movement of your body does not need to be a specific thing so much as you need to give a sense of life and movement. Oh, wow. That sounds difficult. I wouldn't know what pose to do. And, and to be able to hold it for one to... I mean, like, they hold poses for an, half an hour, right? Yeah, so I usually do 20-minute poses, and then we'll take a five-minute break when I'm doing a longer pose. But I've held a pose for once a week for six weeks. Coming back to the pose each time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there are some artists in the Bay Area that are extremely focused on um, realistic representation. And so they want to look at the pose over and over again. And they want to keep recreating it until they have a really sort of perfect piece. Uh, and they let you have their artwork sometimes. They do. They really do. It's pretty cool. I have a whole collection at my house of, of myself in different poses and in different mediums. Oh, how neat. 
And when people come over, do they go, oh, those are really cool? Or do they think, oh, she's so full of herself? It's usually uh, with some of my friends, especially when I would have my male friends over from the math department where I just finished studying. They'd go, oh, my God, that's you naked. I didn't know that you were naked sometimes. Wow. (laughs) And so what inspirational words would you like to give to the young women out there about getting into math and being nude? I think that one of the things I came to with math is that anyone can do math. It's just you have to allow allow yourself um, the ability to be comfortable emotionally with math. Many women are discouraged from science and math from a young age, and I think that this is changing and that I would just encourage all women and young girls out there to pursue it. If you love it, keep doing it. And don't and don't worry if you're beating the boys. It's okay. We no longer have to worry about things like that. And if a boy doesn't like you or makes fun of you because you're smarter than him, tell him tough. You know, you're not going to go to Columbia. I am. Yeah. <laughs> and I think just really being... Being comfortable with yourself is the most important thing you can do as a woman. Men don't care if you're if you're slender or if you're curvy or if you're smart or if you're not. They actually just care if you like yourself. Ah, very good. All right, and then finally, what about all the creepy artists? Aren't there any that creep you out, like Robert Owen Welsh? Yeah, Robert can be really (laughs) creepy. You can't hear us. He's teetering on a rock surrounded by oceans enveloping him uh, here at Marshall (laughs) Gulch in Northern California, just above Bodega Bay. A very beautiful place, yes. Uh, For the creepy artists, I think that um, handling yourself well in whatever it is you do. So I am very professional as an art model. And when I am at one of these jobs, I present myself as friendly and amicable but I am not um, I am not flirting with people in the group or doing anything to bring on the creepiness and if the creepiness comes on anyways you just have to be very polite and find ways of protecting yourself and not being alone with someone in the group that makes you uncomfortable and you have the right to leave if you are uncomfortable a woman should never subject herself to a situation where she is she's not okay I see and, and the, well, you can't really say like the weirdest place. I mean, you've done Pixar. I've done Pixar. I'm trying to think of a weird place, you know, for the like most out on a beach or something. Oh, I can tell you a couple of weird ones. Okay, so I have this one house. It was a, I believe it was a four million dollar estate, and it was out on one of the bays here in the in, in the Bay Area and it was a group of women and they wanted me to pose in the garden sitting on a marble wall in the blazing sun wow. f- for three hours. I can tell you that parts of me were sunburned that I don't like being sunburned. Ow. <laughs> they, they, they really enjoyed themselves and there were some great paintings and I had a beautiful view as you can imagine from an estate looking out on the water but it was a weird job. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Fascinating. It's a fun it's a fun place to find yourself. I also do look forward to a yearly job that I do um, in someone's backyard. They have a beautiful pool and sculpted garden area and I love posing in the water. And this oh. might seem a bit weird to someone else to spend hours posing in the water, but I love it. I love it. You don't get all waterlogged? I do get waterlogged, but I love it. Oh okay. Yeah. So you like long baths? I do love long baths, yes. Water, waterlogged, be damned. Absolutely. I think that water is one of the most comforting elements, in my opinion. And we're more than half water ourselves. We right? are, 80%, yeah. Wow. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you, Rachel Stout, for dodging water waves smashing towards us here. And good luck with your career. And I hope this all recorded on Mike on Mobile. Yay! Thanks, Mike. It's been a pleasure. Woo! Mike Silly Podcast. Thank you, Mike. That was very insightful. It looked like it recorded. Yay! That now, was fun. Now more ocean sound effects. Okay, now. As we go outside of the last place on Earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. And here's today's podcast 
picture. Today's cartoon features a very special guest. Say your name. Why? Because that way people know that you're here. It's called, like, radio. So go ahead. No, I don't want to. Please. Okay. Hello, I'm Madame Brutabella. And I am in this cartoon with Michael Matthew and Butterhead people. Ooh. Yes, Butterheads. We are uh, talking to Butterheads. So see that cartoon today. Why Butterheads? Why not? All right. Uh, The earth shook under my feet this morning. I sang Carol King, and then I watched a Doctor Who last night that I didn't like. I'm I want to draw butterheads. Okay, thanks for understanding. Michael Matthew, we all understand. You are a little strange. Yeah. So tomorrow we will bring you the return of the much loved feature called News Random, where we will look at some recent fascinating stories in the world of science. Plus, we'll hear. From Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Not me. No, you get a day off. Thank God. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Mike, I'm going to pose naked now. Oh, no. Floyd. Please put that back on. Don't encourage him.